uh, this is the series uh, of worldwide PM Night events uh, supported and organized by uh, Product Management Center, um, Product Management Community Center and Product Management Festival. And this time it is hosted by SoftServe. I'll be your host here. My name is Tanya and we have a great speaker, Beata Kupitz, uh, who is a, a product manager at Relativity. And today's topic is like wise of developers, how to build strong bridges between engineering and product. And just before we start, make sure, uh, just a couple of organizational questions, make sure you have your phones here next to you because we may have uh, a poll inside uh, our presentation, during our presentation, and you may need to scan the QR code to answer the question from uh, Beata. Also, please feel free to drop the questions in the chat. So uh, I know that you submitted some questions when you, while you were registering for this event. I believe Beata will address some of them and the others we may ask at the end of the presentation. Um, and yeah, please feel free to uh, drop your additional questions in the chat. So Beata, the stage is all yours. Thank you, Tanya. Hello, everybody. It's great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Let me share my screen. There you go. Yes. Can you see it? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Um, hello, everybody. Thanks for having me once again. Um, exactly. That that's going to be a night about an evening about. Uh, voice of developers and how we, we product managers, what we should do to be able to um, build the bridges of communication between developers, what is important in our work with our engineers, why is it important and how we should take care of that. So my name is Beata Kupiec. I'm the product manager at Relativity. However, by degree, I am the master of classical philology. And uh, this is, Oh, I'm sorry, something is, there we go. And this is my passion. My passion is ancient uh, Greece and, and Rome, and I studied the culture and history of ancient Greece and Rome. My other passions are cooking and gardening and drawing, as you can see. Drawing actually is a cool thing in IT, in IT, and we just discussed that before the call, that using drawing, you can really communicate a lot of stuff related to product management, to product development during different workshops. So this is something that is really cool. It connects non-tech and uh, tech people. Now, because sharing is caring, I do a lot of work actually around product management, which is not related to, to my, um, uh, to my uh, uh, company and to my work, because um, I want to share with people my experience. And I also like to learn from people coming to product tanks in Krakow. I'm the co-organizer of the product tanks in Krakow. I'm writing different blogs uh, for product vision. I'm working at the uh, user experience and product design uh, division at, of uh, University of Technology and Science in Krakow. So sharing is caring. We should be sharing our knowledge. We should be sharing our experience as much as we can as product managers and then learn from others as well, how they solve the problems we have. Uh, what, were, what were their approaches? Now, for the last 10 years, actually over 10 years, I work as a product manager, and that is also my passion. That became my passion, and uh, this is what I'm, what I'm doing. Now, as you can see, and you probably know this triad, this product triad, product manager is always in the middle of the volcano. So we are people who are building bridges between uh, UX design and technology and business. And we need to make sure that those three uh, worlds are talking um, between each other. And our job is making sure that uh, this communication is successful. Now, today I'm going to talk about one part of this product triad. Mm, it's technology, it's engineers. And I want to uh, focus on the cooperation with them. Now, as uh, Tanya said, I hope you have your mobiles um, ready because I want you to tell me the truth and answer one of the questions. So I'm going to open the poll right now. And if you please can uh, scan this QR code and vote for one of the um, uh, options below. So I want to ask you 
your engineers, um, what do they often complain about? Like, do they com uh, complain that priorities change too often? Or do they complain that um, they do not know the product roadmap? Or maybe that when they work, they need to focus more on velocity, not value that they deliver. So take some time. I'm looking at the results of the poll. They're coming here right now. <laughs> I see them moving. So the winner is priorities change too often. 50% of you think that priorities change too often. Yeah, we will be talking about that. And I think that's exactly what, what the engineers complain, mm, complain a lot. Thank you guys for uh, answering those que uh, this question. So as Marty Kagan said, Marty Kagan, my guru uh, for product management, he said, behind every great product, there is a great product manager. However, without our engineers, I think we product people would be standing behind nothing. So that is why we should be listening to our engineers the same way we are listening to our customers. And we should hear what they say and we should react to whatever they want to tell us. Now, engineers complain very often that during their work, they focus more on velocity, not value. As you voted with 50%, they also complain a lot that the priorities constantly change. And they complain that they often do not know the direction of the product that we're building. So let's focus on the velocity first and think how can we build the bridge of communicating the value and why actually value is important when we work with our engineers. So we all know that velocity is important because it helps us to understand the quantity of work that is delivered during the sprint. However, it is very easy to get lost and focus on velocity in focusing on velocity only. And it may quickly become much more important than the value. So, you know, I have a green eyes, pair of green eyes, and I like green color. However, I quickly, really quickly become red if I see people using green color to communicate team success, product success, and sprint success based on velocity only. I used to see this kind of a reports with this kind of information. Those are reports sent by product managers, team leads, project managers, engineering managers, to leaders. So they're communicating overall health of the sprint green. 80% of stories completed. Story points planned, 50. Story points completed, 40. This, this one is the best. Team successfully achieved 50% of the sprint goal. Goal achieved? No. And I'm asking like, seriously? This is how you're communicating your team success and product success with 80% of completed stories and 50% of achieved goal? Now, you know what goal is? Goal is a goal. It's like in football. It's like in soccer, right? You either score it or you miss it. Now, even in soccer, if you have 80% of ball possession, 27 shots, you don't have any yellow cards, no red cards, you can still lose the game, right? Now, this guy, Robert Lewandowski, everybody knows this guy, right? This guy doesn't score at 50%. He either hits or he misses. Well, fortunately, he doesn't miss a lot. But when he hits, it's 100% a goal, not half of this, right? So is this how we would like to communicate to our leaders the success of the teams and uh, success of the product? The answer is no. Our engineers, they build and they want to know what they build and they want to know what they deliver and they want to know why they deliver and they want to be proud of what they do. And believe me, they do not care about the 
colors of the spouses. So our job as product managers is to make sure that our engineers know and understand their goals over this during the sprint and they understand what value is expected from them at the end of the sprint. Now, whenever I have requirements and then whenever I start an initiative and whenever I have any problems to solve for our customers, I always sit together with my engineers and we refine those requirements. We talk about them. We prepare together the stories uh, for the backlog. We prioritize those stories, functional, non-functional, whatever we have to do uh, to solve the problems and to fulfill the requirements. Now, when we're done, we plan our milestones and we plan a couple of goals ahead, right? What we want to achieve within next two or three sprints. And every sprint has a goal assigned. Now, having goal assigned to the sprint helps me to define the value and the success of what the sprint, what the team should deliver at the end. Because this value and success is defined, my team can make a lot of decisions themselves during the sprint because they know what is expected from them. They know what product increment they should deliver and they know how to do that, right? So they don't have to come to me with every single question. They can make a lot of decisions and they are independent in making those decisions. Now, because they are independent, I don't have to babysit them anymore, right? It doesn't mean that I'm not there and leaving during the sprint. No, I'm there to answer any questions that they may have, but I can also focus and I have time to focus on my product management job, which is market research, talking to customers, analyzing data, you know, uh, working with um, UX design and so on and so on. Now also because my team has a goal defined, during stand-ups, they focus more on the goal, not particular stories, right? So it's important for them to answer the questions like, are we on track to achieve the goal? Or are we blocked by something to achieve it? Is there any risk we will not achieve the goal? So this is their focus of the discussion during the stand-up, not only how many stories we're going to deliver and if we are delivering them. Also, having goal defined helps me to communicate to my leaders and stakeholders, what is the progress of the um, product development? So I can uh, focus on what has been already delivered, like what value has been already delivered and what is the, the plan? What, what, what do we plan to, to deliver as the next steps? Last but not least, my team is motivated because they know what is expected from them. They know what they should achieve at the end and they play together. They, like in soccer, they play together to score. So whenever you see people using green color to communicate team success and product success based on velocity only, I'd say react and evangelize because that is the value that matters. That is the value that defines your success, product success and team success. And don't kill it by sending reports full of fancy burn charts with fake news, right? 50% of achieved goal is not achieved, it's missed. So let me answer one of the questions that you were asking before the session. So the first milestone is done. We are uh, just behind the value. But there was a question uh, coming from you and thank you very much for submitting them. If the product manager should know the project technologies, right? So my answer is, well, yes, definitely. We product managers, we should know some project technologies. We're not project managers, maybe some of us are, but by the, by the definition, we are not project, manager, project managers, but we should be able to know some techniques or to know how to do things around the project. Like we should know how to plan. So planning is something that we should have some experience in. 
We should be good at tracking. We should be good at scheduling. We will, we will be scheduling a lot of meetings and uh, sometimes we play the role of, uh, um, of the person who's scheduling all the scrum meetings, for example, for the team, right? We need to collaborate with different teams, with different stakeholders. We need to collaborate with uh, different um, teams across our, our uh, company. And we need to understand what they can do for us. We have to take care of time and budget and, and people, this magic project management triad. We need to know our team's capacity and our team's velocity, right? Knowing on that, all that and, and focusing on, on this kind of a project management uh, stuff helps us really to, to set the goals for the team, to plan accordingly, to know if they can achieve that or not. Uh, to know when, to know how much time we need and uh, if we have budget for that. And it helps us really to deliver the value to, to our customers. On the other side, we also need to know and understand uh, what methodologies our team using and we as a part of the team to um, deliver the software. Is it Agile, Scrum, Kanban, Lean, whatever, right? So if you ask, must product manager know project technolog technologies? My answer is yes, we should know them. Uh, however, it might be that, you know, in our company, we have also people who are working as project managers and maybe we don't have to focus too much on some of the areas. I used to have a project manager. I used to own the, um, uh, the product portfolio where we, are, we were focusing on, there were a couple of product managers working on different uh, parts of this portfolio. And we needed actually, and also our teams had to record the time spent on um, development. So we needed a project manager to, to track all that, to be able to help us with uh, being on, on time, on budget and so on and so on. If you don't have this person, well, that's your, that's your job to do that. Uh, you can maybe, if you have an engineering manager to cooperate with, you can split it with, uh, with them. So, um, so, so you, you have a little bit less on your plate. Uh, but in general, yes, we should be also a little bit of um, project managers in our job. Now, let's move to the winner of the poll, which is priorities constantly change, right? Um, engineers complain, you know, it's, there's no sense to plan on, on the sprint backlog because it's going to be changed in the middle of the sprint. Or they complain, we don't know what we should focus on because the priorities constantly change. And I say, there are a couple of reasons of constantly changing priorities. It's a bad product manager or a bad PM or a bad product owner, or a bad PM, or it is us, it's us product people. We are bad people. If we constantly change the priorities or we allow others from outside to constantly change our team priorities. Now you will say, well, we live in the agile world. A lot of us is um, de delivering software Mm, with agile methodologies and agile is about changes and agile is about reacting to those changes and i say yes that that is true however agile doesn't mean mess in priorities right our job as product managers is to make sure that our teams have well planned well prioritized and uninterrupted work during the sprint, so they know what they should focus on. Now, let me tell you my story. A couple of years ago, I joined one of my development teams and I inher inherited a product from the previous product manager, previous product manager left, and I started working with the team and I started observing their work. And after the first sprint, I noticed that my team is working in the reactive mode. Then after the second sprint, I noticed that my team is working in the reactive mode. Then after the third sprint, I noticed, and after the third sprint, I said, enough. Like, what is going on here, right? My team was planning their sprints quite decent. I mean, I helped them as much as I could because I was new, but they set the priorities. They set the sprint goal. They never delivered what they have planned. So what was the problem? 
Now, the problem was that my team owned a product with a very huge technology debt. And every single day, but literally every single day, customer support team reported a bunch of production incidents coming from our customers. Now, my team immediately jumped and focused on those incidents. That's normal. Customers are blocked. Product is not working. Something is going wrong. We need to unblock our customers. We need to make sure that they, they can uh, focus on, on their daily activities. So they jumped into addressing those product incidents, providing workarounds to the customers. And then immediately after that, they jumped into fixing every single defect related to this incident. Now, sprint backlog, who cares? Priorities? Actually, they used customer's voice to prioritize the incident. It was either screaming or yelling or shouting. Their engineering manager, he didn't see an, uh, didn't see a, uh, an issue because for him, you know, everything was fine. He sprint reports full of addressed incidents, full of fixed defects, velocity high, everything's fine, not a problem. The only problem was frustrated and demotivated team because they had a feeling that they deliver something, delivering nothing at the same time. So after those couple of sprints, I had enough data to say stop. And I did with the team what nobody did with them before. We started with product roadmap and we created the product roadmap for the very first time ever. Then we sit together and we define a bunch of our goals, objectives and key results. What are our goals? What we would like to achieve building this product? When we would like to achieve those goals and how we would like to get there? What do we have to do? How are we going to measure the success of those goals? So we set a bunch, a bunch of uh, OKRs. Now I asked my team to be a little bit more assertive. And I said, guys, not every single incident coming from production is immediate subject to fix, right? We have our roadmap, uh, we have our OKRs. I also had enough data at that time to be able to decide if this is like the upcoming incident is really something urgent or maybe something minor. And I asked them to be a little bit more assertive. And they were reluctant at the very beginning because for them, customer support team was always the team that was setting the priorities. You know, customers are screaming, we need to fix everything for them. However, their assertiveness increased a little bit because I told them, guys, I am here to protect you. I'm here to protect you and the work that you have set for the sprint, the work that we prioritized and planned together. And I told them, of course, when deciding on priorities, we will take our customer voice under consideration, but we have a roadmap that we built. We have goals that we need to achieve. And then if you're working, working only in the reactive mode, then you decrease your chances to improve your product, right? So we decided to have a firefighter. That was the rotating role, sprint over sprint, a person who was dedicated to take the burden of um, production incidents and let the rest of the team to focus on prioritized backlog. And last but not least, I started saying no. And you know what? The word didn't collapse. Now, my customers were quite normal people. So when I came to, to them and said, guys, I know you have a problem. Actually, I have a problem because my product is not working and my product is not available for you. And I know you have a workaround in place and you're unblocked with your work right now, with your daily activities. Now, I am not providing the, the fix to, the, to this um, incident, to this defect right now, because in two weeks time, three weeks time, you will have a solution in place that will address not only that problem, but many others that you have or you may have in the future. And the customers, normal people, 
They said, fine, that's okay. We're white. So sprint over sprint, our product started to being shaped in a quite good direction. The firefighter took the burden of production incidents, letting the team to focus on the prioritized sprint backlog. Now the team, team's production, uh, team's product, uh, productivity increased and their motivation went up because they finally started working in the proactive, not the reactive mode. And they could see the results of their work, which was improved product, both from user experience and technology perspective. Now, you asked me before the meeting, so you, you submit this question about how to decide what is important and who is right. It's a little bit about priorities, because if you decide who's important and who's right, probably it's easier for you to set the priorities, right? Maybe. Now, everyone is right until it is proven they are wrong. So that's the first golden rule that we need to take in mind. Everyone and everyone's idea is right until it is proven that it is not right. Now to do that, we need to validate, experiment, gather data, have the results, right? If I have an idea in place or somebody is coming to me and says, you know that that's gonna be really a good solution or that's gonna be good idea. It's a great hypothesis, it's gonna work. Well, we'll see, maybe it's gonna work, maybe not. If we start experimenting on that, if we start validating that, we gather enough data. Data is like keyword here, right? Data in product management is the most important thing. And then if we have results, we will see, right? Maybe you are right, maybe not. Maybe the hypothesis will be um, validated positively, maybe not. Now, of course, if you want to decide who's in, what's important is you need to set a bunch of activities before you can decide what is important. So first of all, you need to start with your company's KPIs. You need to know them. Then you need to know the vision and the strategy of your, of your product. Then the goals that you need to achieve, the roadmap that you have, what are your customers? What's your market? What are your competitors? Again, data, right? If you have uh, KPIs defined, vision, strategy, goals, roadmap, then if somebody comes to you and asks you to include their needs or their requests into your roadmap, then that's the moment to negotiate that, right? Let's discuss, that's my roadmap. This is the customer segment that I'm targeting. Those are my goals. Those all are aligned with the strategy and vision. How about your request? Why do you think that your request fits into what, I, what I'm doing right now? If it fits, the question is, can I do that? Should I do that? Uh, is there any trade-off? Does it mean that um, I don't have enough people to work on this? So maybe I need to put something from my, um, from my roadmap. Of course, um, it's, it's everything this, that, that is everything that we need to take under consideration when we discuss on priorities and we try to decide, the, define what is important. Our goals, our roadmap, our customers, their, their sentiments, uh, where we are with our product, right? Uh, this is everything that we really need to take under consideration. Now, I'm using very often Eisenhower matrix. I don't know how much familiar you are with that, but it helps me really to prioritize the things, um, especially the ones that I want to delete from my to-do list, right? Is it urgent and important? Is it urgent, not important? Or maybe it's not urgent, not important, or not urgent, but important. So use this matrix if you want to decide if something is really important and you should address it right now or schedule it on your to-do list and um, do it later. Maybe you should delegate it, delegate, delegate it to somebody who can, who, who, who can do that. Or maybe just forget it. That's not the time to do that, right? Take all this stuff under consideration, gather your data, think about your goals, and then you will have an answer to how to decide what is important and who is right. Now, direction. It's one of the bridges that is important for us as a product managers, because if our team 
knows the direction of our product that we're building, that's much easier for all of us to cooperate. And the engineers, they often complain that they do not know the direction of the product that they're building. We don't know where we're going with this product. We don't know why we're building this product. We don't know what's the plan for this product, like for a future, a year, two, three, what's the vision? So our job, again, SPMs, is to make sure that our engineers know the vision and the strategy of the product, that they know the product roadmap and they know the customers that they're building for. Now, product roadmap should be always built together with engineers and it should include their needs in the area of, you know, technology improvements or innovations, um, developers um, improvements, um, their own uh, initiatives that they have for uh, efficiency. If we have product roadmap built only on fancy business features, then we have a good product with efficient technology and satisfied teams. If we include our engineers' needs into the roadmap, we will end up with a great product with best-in-class technology and highly motivated teams. You see the difference, right? So I always build product roadmaps together with my engineers. Not only that I need to and want to address their needs, but it also helps me to explain to them the bigger picture, the vision, the strategy, the direction, the goals that we have. And it's easier for me because they're not standing next to it. They are part of this because they're building this product roadmap with me together. Now I also involve them in product roadmap reviews. If there is any change in the direction, if there is any change in, in the strategy, in the approach, then and the roadmap has to be adjusted, then the engineers know about this because again, they are part of this. I review with them the objectives and key results every single sprint, right? We sit together and we uh, before the planning or after planning and we review the objectives and key results. Are we on track? Are we still uh, hitting the, the targets? Is there any risk we will not be able to achieve on any of the, of the objectives? Now I also show them data. Data is also important uh, to show them the bigger picture of our product and they love numbers. They love to hear about customers, market, um, results of the research. So any data that I have related to the initiative and to the product on daily basis, I show them this data. And I ask them also to remember to gather every single metric whenever we're building the product. And I ask my engineers to attend the customer meetings. For me, it is important because if there are some technical questions coming from the customers, then I have a technical person sitting next to me and who can, who can address the questions. For engineers, it's a great opportunity to see their users, customers, real people using their product. And they can listen to their pain points, they can hear their feedback, they can see them using the product. And believe me, they love it. So in your cooperation, with your engineers and building the bridges of communication, cooperation, and product development. Focus on value, not velocity, because value defines your product. It increases team's productivity and motivation. Now, take care of priorities and don't change them too much and don't allow others to change them. And let your teams know the direction of the product that they're building. And make sure they know their customers and their users. So our engineers are one of the product triad. And it's very important to, for us as product managers to build very strong build, uh, bridges between them. Because I may say actually we work probably the most with engineers from this entire product triad. 
And the engineers are the people who know the best how to turn your ideas and customers' needs into great products. So ask not what your engineers can do for you, ask what you can do for your engineers. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, I open to them. Thank you. Thanks, Beata. That was really great and well-structured talk. Um, guys, please unmute yourself if you want to ask questions. I don't see you typed anything in, in the chat, so feel free to voice it. Uh, meanwhile, I have like one uh, question. When you are talking about like mm, you're doing the roadmap with your engineers, are you doing that with all of them? Do you have any specific people in mind, like tech, technical leaders or so? I mean, maybe you can quickly describe the process, how it's typically done. Mm -hmm. Just more details from your personal experience. Yeah. Usually those are engineering managers and tech leads. Uh, so when, when on the product side, we define the product goals and to where we would like to go um, and the direction, the strategy, which actually is also um, discussed at the higher level with um, engineering leads, right? Because the vision and the strategy, the product vision and the strategy has to be agreed and transparent and um, legible for everybody, product, engineering, user experience. So whenever we have the strategy defined, we know what are the top uh, initiatives, top uh, KPIs we want to concentrate on. Uh, then I come with this input to my uh, engineering team. And first of all, definitely talk, uh, I talk always to the engineering manager and the tech lead. However, if there is a need to, um, to invite anybody from the team who, who wants to participate in those sessions, we do that, right? But usually the, 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 the people, the engineers, they have like stuff to do during the sprint, so they concentrate on the other. Mm, they, they also don't like meetings very often. Mm, so I, I spent many, many um, hours actually with engineering managers and the tech lead, and we sit together and we define the objectives and key results, so what we want to achieve. And then based on that, we think about the initiatives that are going to uh, be on the roadmap, right? Sometimes it happens that uh, if you want to build something on like um, product wise and a solution or any features it might be that it's fully dependent on some technology or maybe technology debt that we have. So before we actually remove the technology debt or before we implement something, we're not able even to move further with providing some solutions to the customers, right? So we need to really think like how we want to prioritize that. So it's really like a brainstorming, you know, thinking about we want to, in, uh, we want to um, this year invest into this area and this area, how does it fit into the, um, the goals that we want to achieve? Um, do we have enough uh, people to, to achieve that? If not, can we get some resources? bad word, I don't like it, some help like in a Q3, for example, or Q4, because this is what I'm saying right now is all happening at the end of the year, right, which is like uh, November, December timeframe. So we need to, uh, we need to make sure that at the end, we understand, okay, those are our objectives, we will achieve them if we have enough people or um, or maybe we, if we don't have enough, or we don't get the uh, um, more more people working on those on those objectives, then we need to like reduce them, right? So there is a lot of really discussions happening, and then and then at the end, of course, if we have this roadmap done, uh, it we have to be aligned with uh, our leaders presented to the to the senior leaders and saying like, yes, that's our roadmap. It's, those are our objectives. Those objectives are falling into the company's uh, bigger initiatives are related to company bigger KPIs. And this is what we want to achieve. Those are the um, metric uh, success metrics that we want to uh, achieve, reduce by this number, by that number, in, increase by that number, whatever area we are touching. And then if we get the green light, we're, we're starting executing on this roadmap and then this roadmap as we all know, lives its own life and is <laughs> adjusted every single month. 
And then, yeah, we never end up with the same roadmap as we, of course, planned. Uh, but that's great, right? Because we know what we're doing and uh, we're reviewing it constantly, making sure that um, that that we still go the, the direction that, that we should. So. Yeah. yeah, the other question, I would probably like to re reiterate a bit the question that was asked to you and you answered that about like project management techniques. But I understood the question that uh, being, a, what if you uh, as a product manager doesn't know the technology behind the project? I mean, the technical stuff like this mm. uh, .NET technology, React or whatever it is. I mean, should you know those technologies or you not obviously need to have deep dive into them because you have the engineering team for that? Got it. Then I misunderstood this question. I don't but know. I think, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, project management is also needed. So I think that was also the valid answer. That was really great answer. Yeah. <laughs> and, and project technologies. Yeah. Um, so, okay. I am not a um, non, uh, non tech person, right? I never studied anything that is related with uh, technology. And everything that I know about the technology is coming from IT. And actually, since I. Uh, joined IT like 10, 10 years ago, uh, I, started, I started learning about that, right? So it might be that even you've do, if you don't know the technology and start uh, with um, some company as a product manager, that's our job to learn, right? I'm not saying learn to code and I'm not saying to learn to do the, I don't know, uh, handling the pull requests or whatever, right? But we product managers, we need to understand the technology that is behind this, uh, this product, right? We, we need to understand if it, because we need to know if it's efficient for what we're building. Might be that the technology is uh, not efficient enough and maybe we need to change that. We need to know if uh, uh, this technology is uh, actually really helping us building this product as well, right? And we also need to understand like what this technology, does it help our teams to execute, it, uh, execute on the, um, on the uh, roadmap? Or is it like, you know, old technology, there are lots of bumping with this and, you know, maybe we need to change that. So definitely we don't have to be expert. And it also depends on the product that you're owning, right? Because there is a lot of um, technical product managers who are actually um, educated uh, um, in technology, who knows very well all, you know, all the details, uh, details of, uh, I don't know, Kubernetes or all the yeah. details of any other stuff, right? Whatever Docker is and the uh, entire uh, infrastructure. Uh, and those people are mm, like API masters, for example, right? If they are technical product managers and they are owning like technical uh, products or te technical aspects of the products, they definitely have more knowledge uh, around the technology. If you're owning uh, products that are less technical from like uh, product definition view, right? It's more customer facing product, right? Like applications or, you know, mobile application, desktop applications, whatever. Uh, then you don't have to be a really technical person because um, skills like analytical skills, communication skills, uh, mm, uh, being data driven, those are uh, uh, those are all um, aspects of really you know good product management. Data driven, customer focus, right, and uh, creativeness. So this is what is expected from product managers, right, as well. You can learn technology, but you should learn technology. And for for example, for me, when I started with IT 10 years ago, over 10 years ago, I, I used to work at the airport. And then I started uh, working with IT and I had no idea what IT was, right? IT, they're doing something. Okay, they, they hired me as a business analyst at that time. And I was like, okay, I, I have no idea about the IT. And then I started talking to my team, right? Because, you know, uh, that's great that I found people who, people who really taught me a lot of stuff. And uh, everything that I know today about IT, everything that I know today about software and different technologies is coming from my teams. And at that time I learned all about the web services that I needed and about, about uh, other stuff. Right now I'm learning from my teams, like whenever they are just exactly migrating to different uh, solutions. So I would say, if you ask if PM should know the technology, depends on what product you, you own. 
if it's technical product and you want to be a technical PM, yes, you need to know the technology because you will be um, developing this technology, improving this. If you're owning the product that it's not very technical, but is built by, 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 by technical people, you still need to understand what, uh, uh, what is UI, like front end part, part built on and what is the back end part built on, right? And uh, are there any problems, obstacles? So you need to understand that definitely to be able not to talk about that. And that's why I'm for, for the customer meetings, I'm taking the, um, uh, my, my engineers, right? Because if the customer is asking really very deep technical questions for me, it's like, oh, that's the professional here. I can talk about different <laughs> stuff like strategy market and what problems you have and how can we the best approach them. Um, so yes and no, depending really on what area of product management you're doing. I would say yes, but the, the level of extent and, and deepness of yeah, the yeah. knowledge depends on, exactly. the project, uh, on the project. Exactly. That's that's the perfect statement. Yes, but it really depends like to what level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, audience, any question? I believe I have one. Feel free. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Uh, so thanks again, Beata, for the for the great presentation and, and content you provided. Really useful. I think a lot of our participants will be waiting for the for the presentation afterwards. Uh, my question is like a legacy question from our from one of the previous events we had, uh, and it's more about this um, velocity equals value, it, like not equals value, uh, stuff in developing the product. So uh, we had an event with Rich Mirano from United States. He is a product management consultant he like coaches uh, product uh, cpos in the companies and he um, had a case and it was like this so you're a product manager you have a dev team they all are pretty expensive specifically in the united states and you have a roadmap you for example a quarter roadmap you have a sprint you have some features to do and then a sales representative comes to you and says, okay, guys, our biggest client uh, has this need. He wants this feature right away. SA app, you need to do it. And mm -hmm. you say to him, okay, great, but we don't have it planned in this sprint. So my team is not uh, so flexible to put something else into the sprint. And it, this feature is not even in a roadmap for this quarter. Mm -hmm. And the sales rep says, okay, I don't care. We have the biggest clients for the company. He like, he's a 20% of our revenue. Revenue, so I don't care if you you just need to do it. If you're if you're a product manager who like good in stakeholder management, you will say no, uh, and 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 that's it. But it's not it's not that's it. He as a sales manager knows that he needs to find decision maker, and he will just go higher in the hierarchy of your company. For example, to the CEO, he will give a great pitch about why we need this feature, and then CEO will push you. So, okay, we need this feature. And you need as a product manager to explain to your team why you need to, you know, over time, overwork, put this feature into job. So this is not about the voice of developers. They will just be in a situation when, okay, we need to do it. We don't have any other chance. So how to manage this situation? I know it's all about like a stakeholder management in this mm -hmm. case, but eventually need to explain to your team something. So like maybe two scenarios, what to do if you don't have any choice and your team will need to do it. So how you as a product manager will listen to your team and you know like put this idea into their heads that we need to do it and how to you know like if you will block this idea at all and you will say your team okay guys we need to be like a one front here and say why we cannot do this feature in this sprint so let let me start with the second part uh i think it's it's not about like we cannot do that in the sprint right because if there is really a need and I would start discussing definitely with a with a sales guy, right? Understanding deeper and deeper and deeper, and also presenting to them. And that's why it is important to have this plan, the roadmap, the goals, because it's really presenting to them the goals and presenting to them how what I'm doing is impacting other customers or improving their lives, right? Because the salesperson is not only about this one customer. What I'm doing is also for other customers. Then, if we come to the solution, uh, to the conclusion that. Well, definitely what he's right has on the plate right now. And it's really the most important customer. It's like a strategic uh, and, you know, it's, it's very important and we have to do that. Then he needs to also understand that that means also for him as a salesman, I'm not going to do that and that and that for the other customers. So they will come back to me with some complaints probably in the future. Right. So that's one thing. 
if we decide that, well, um, it has to be done, then definitely I'm against really like jumping in the middle of the sprint and just, just changing priorities and just like, guys, sales team said we have to do that, do it. I don't care if it's going to take you like a weekend or two, do it. No. In worst case scenario, I'm just stopping the sprint. Right, so um, if I know that I need to change the direction, for example, for next three sprints, because I have to deliver the feature and the work has to be done right now. First of all, of course, before I do that, I'm talking to my engineers, tech leads, we need to estimate that, we need to know the effort, we need to know if it's feasible, we need to communicate the delivery timeline. So it's not that somebody wants, we, we need to really make sure that we know what we want to do, we know how we want to solve that, the timelines and everything. If we are all aligned that, yes, this is what we want to do, taking under consideration that we need to change our roadmap, that it's going to impact our goals, that it that we will not deliver. And everybody is online, including the, my CPO, right? Everybody's in line on that. Then in worst case, if I cannot add it incrementally to current sprint, like my team is in the middle of the sprint, I'm just stopping the sprint and I'm completely changing the direction. I'm saying, okay, guys, um, explaining to them exactly what I said. Why is it important? Why we need to do that, right? Uh, making sure that maybe we can just close very quickly what we are in the middle of, or maybe we can just put it on hold for now. Taking care of providing them with the clear information of why, why is it important, uh, and how we're going to manage the rest of our roadmap later. And then I will stop the sprint, plan it once again, right? So if it's, for example, I don't know, we start sprints um, every Wednesday, uh, every every uh, second Wednesday, right? If we are in the middle of the sprint and it's Wednesday, then we'll stop it, plan it, and we just change, you know, the, 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 the sprint cadence. Uh, but I think the most important is to really understand on every single level, why is it important to communicate to everybody what is the risk, to communicate to everybody uh, what we will not achieve or can we delay in achieving because of this request, right? Communicate like what, how, what is the impact on the other customers, right? And if it's acceptable, right? So this is everything that we need to take under consideration. Of course, effort and timelines, agree on the timelines and then well, talking to the team. And, you know, I mean, some, it's, it's really difficult to change people sometimes and their mindset. And definitely some of people will be like, oh, again, we need to change the priorities. If, I hope it's not ha happening like every second or third sprint, right? So if they know that we are planning accordingly and things happen because it's agile, because that's customer, because that's the company need, Sometimes we, 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 we should do that. Now, if it's happening like every second sprint, there is something wrong, right? Then it means that we need to really revisit our conversations with the um, executives and sales uh, people and marketing whoever is in, in, involved on our strategy and our, on our goals, right? And they need to also understand if they should be on board as well, right, as a stakeholders. So I would take this all back to the team and um, yeah, stop the sprint and, and uh, and do that. However, if this is really something that I wouldn't, uh, like if we take those pluses and minuses of, of these trade-offs, and if we come to the uh, conclusion that this is not what we want to really do right now, because it really impacts uh, our current roadmap and our deliverables, which are going, for example, to increase our revenue in like, you know, short term, uh, whenever we, do, we deliver that, then it means no, and hey, let's let's discuss it. Like when we can do that. I'm not going to stop my work right now. Be be with me. We will do that. Like when we deliver what we're having right now, because this is also important. Maybe for other customers who are bringing us not 20 but 40 percent of the revenue. Maybe not one, but a couple of them. So this is like a very very. <laughs> and it sounds like that when you say that. It takes like really a lot of time. And sometimes it's take my time as a product manager as well. I need to, especially if my salesman is somewhere uh, over the seas to sit really in the evenings because I don't want to bother the team to be able to come to, to, to this conclusion, to be, to be able to, to uh, have those discussions. 
and I try to keep my team as less involved as possible. I just want to protect them, as I said, and make sure that they can continue with the work. Just at the end, when everything we 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 we, we decide everything and then new direction, then I come to them and just communicate. Thank, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> it's our job. Not very easy, challenging, but. That's why I said you don't have to have a lot of technical skills, but communication, negotiation, and so on. this is what, the, what what is really important for product managers, I guess. Soft skills are the the core. Soft skills are the core, and then hard skills you can mm -hmm. always learn. Communication and building the bridges. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, as I said, I mean, uh, I really. I really say that it starts with a good strategy and then good plan, right? And it starts from the top, really. If ever, and that that's why it's very important in a company, smaller or bigger, whatever, that people from entire product triad, because in, in the product triad, the business is actually sales, marketing, and customer success managers, and whoever is actually dealing with customers, support as well, right? Support will be always pushing for, uh, for changes and fixing defects because, you know, they don't like screaming customers, right? They don't want to interact too much with them if they are really, like, unsatisfied all the time. But it's really important to have all those people and all those teams uh, on board with the plans. Right? Because it's then it's really easier to communicate the trade-offs and to communicate the impact of any um, sudden changes, right? Sometimes we just need to adjust, but sometimes maybe we can just do things in a, in a little bit different, different order. Yeah, true. Thank you, Barata. I see people are dropping. Probably they have some other <laughs> late calls today. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you um, for all attendees who came to listen to us. Please stay tuned to other PM nights and P PM nights in Rotslav and in other cities as well. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And thank you for, for having me. Have a great evening. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Have a good evening. And we will send you a video recording and a short follow-up like in a few hours. So Perfect. don't miss it. Bye-bye. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye.